Good day guys, I'm back. My name is Max Solomon and I'm a born again believer. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you for tuning in today once again to watch uh, this particular video. Now, there was a recent earthquake that took place in Cape Town, um, actually a tremor not an actual earthquake earthquake but a tremor i'll explain later why i say a tremor right so uh this guy Bushir, uh, started gloating about it on his social media pages i'm going to react to his video though uh, but before i react to his video whereby they put up on his channel which they put up in his channel to show that his prophecy of the earthquake was accurate. I'll first read a few scriptures because this is very important. We need to test everything by scripture. You know, this is the same guy that claimed to be walking on air. Man. <laughs> he claimed to be walking on air. And apparently another guy from the States, uh, Jimmy Kimmel or something like that, proved on his live um, uh, show that how can he also walk on air, you know, using um, uh, certain camera angles. And by the way, when this guy Bushiri walked on air, he did it at his house. This is the same guy, remember I used to be in his church, you know? I used to be his, in his church. I started watching him last year already. Yeah? And last year there was a certain prophecy where he said uh, people from, uh, there were two guys that he actually prophesied to, and then he wrote a ridiculous amount. I forgot now, but there is a video. In his channel, there is a video of him uh, prophesying to this guy, and then he said he must partner with another guy. And then they are going to build, they are going to be given some sort of a tender to build a city in, <laughs> in Kenya. Né? In Kenya. And when I look at that situation, I, I, I found it so funny because the, the, the amount was so ridiculous. And he even signed on the paper. The amount was so ridiculous. And after some time, the guys came back to say, well, they received the tender and all that stuff but you could see that this was a cooked up story because and it was in the i think in the trillion or something like that i, I, I mean imagine 700 trillion pounds or something like that and the money that is in situation around the world if you can google that is 84 trillion but i'm not there that is a that is a story for another day i'll get back to that Right, so he claims that he's gloating about this. And one thing that I want you to, 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 to know about false prophets is that whenever something that they predicted comes to pass, they always gloat about it. They always try to prove to people that they are true prophets. And the question is, why is that? Why are these false prophets always trying to prove that they are true? The answer to that question is because they know that when what they predicted becomes true, many people who are not uh, discerning enough will fall for that trap. They are doing that to attract as many clients as possible, as many people as possible. And always the glory goes to them. It's never going to God. The glory is always, is, is always about them. How my Papa accurately prophesied about something. Guys, <laughs> Let's read some scripture. Let's read some. I'm going to start with the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. 
verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. The Bible says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. Beware of them. They come or they are disguised as harmless sheep. When you look at this guy, Bushir, and the, and the flamboyance that he has and the way he speaks, from, from, from afar, you might think, I this guy is a true man of God. This guy, he knows how to, to, to speak the word of God and all that stuff. But it's all the, the people who will fall for that is people who do not know the Bible. It's people who cannot discern the spirits. I can tell you boldly that the spirit that this guy operates under is not the spirit of God. I said it. It's not the spirit of God. And I'm praying for him. I'm praying for him that he repents from his falsehood. He repents from deceiving people. He repents from trying to mislead people. You know? Because this guy, all he does, he does this for money. Nothing else, nothing more. He does. Some people might come here in the comment section and argue with me and say, well, this guy already has money. Well, he has it because he stole it. I said it. He stole it how? By manipulating people, by deceiving people, using the word of God. The Bible says, beware of such people who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is by the way they act. By the way, and, 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 and guys, before you argue with me, the scripture is clear on this. You can identify them by the way they act. Look at the comment section right now. How his gallop of followers are trying to attack anyone who disagrees with the guy. Anyone who disagrees with him, his gallop of followers will try to attack that person. They, 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 these people, they don't even reason. How can they reason when they don't know scripture? Because they don't know scripture. You know, they don't know scripture. Uh, so these guys, as I was saying, whenever something that they predicted comes to pass, they gloat because they want the glory to come to them. They want the, their gullible followers to, to be like, ha, our papa predicted that something will happen and now it has happened. So what happens now? People begin to trust these guys. People begin to say, I, this guy is a true man of God. He is a true man of God. Be very careful. And before you come and say to me, I, Bushir has a larger church. Bushir has a larger church. Or uh, there are many people that are following him uh, and all that stuff. Like the things that people you usually say to people who are exposing the lies and the deceptions of these false prophets. Hi, he's richer than you. He's more famous than you. It's not about fame. It's not about being rich. It's about exposing falsehood in the body of Christ. Making sure that those who are imposters, they are exposed so that people do not get trapped or deceived by these false prophets. The fact that someone has a larger following or money doesn't make them true men of God. I said it. It doesn't make them true or real men of God. The Bible, if you if you read here in the book of uh, in the book of um, Matthew, né? in the book of Matthew, uh, let me just see. Let me just see. Yeah, in the book of Matthew, chap uh, chapter seven, verse twenty-one, the Bible says, "Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter." Verse twenty-two. On Judgment Day, many will say to me, "Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name." Oh. -oh. 
and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. Look at the answer of the Lord in verse 23. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. You who break God's laws. So, because someone is flamboyant and all that stuff, doesn't make them the real man of God. It doesn't. And I want to show you how to identify this, what I'm saying here. Okay, I wrote down a few verses. I'm going to go to the book of Matthew now, chapter 24, verse 24. Book of Matthew chapter 24. Before, before, before I, I, I tell you about this thing, uh, before I get to the real thing, uh, book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, For false messengers and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. If possible, even God's chosen ones. You see? Then the Lord in verse 25 says, See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. Let me read this again. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders, so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. These guys, they come here, they claim to be prophets, they perform fake miracles, fake uh, signs and wonders, you know, and many people fall for this. But the true children of God, they don't fall for this. I'm not falling for the miracles and the signs and wonders that these false prophets, the likes of Pushiri, Lukao, and whoever is doing this nonsense. They're doing because the world, because the Lord warned us about this before time, ahead of time, that this will happen. This will happen. And we're living in those times. We are living in those times where we have a lot of people who claim to be from God, but, but they are not. They are not from God. These guys, they are not from God. They do not speak for God at all whatsoever. And I'm, I'm and I and 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 I, I and and I am very much um, pained to see people falling for this trap, falling for this nonsense. People praying in the God of Major One. Who is the God of Major One? Now, don't come and tell me that in the Old Testament people used to say. Ah, God of Abraham, God of this and God of that. So that's why we're saying God of major one. I'm telling you, who is God? Small letter G of major one. It's not the true God. It's a false God. It's a false God. And you people, you know, when I was there, I used to also apply those oils, as I told you. Apply those oils. And when I started, when I tried to pray in, for, for the God of major one to come and help me, my spirit did not feel right. I was like, what is happening now? I did not feel right. And the word of God convicted me so greatly that don't pray to unknown gods. Pray to the God that you know, the God of the Bible. The God of the... If you watch this guy carefully, you would see that anything, that's why he allows people to bow down to him. People, even all people to call him Papa, Papa this, Papa that. This guy, he is very good at deceiving people. This guy, he's, he is so deceptive. He knows how to mix truth with error and make it seem like truth. And people who are not uh, familiar with scripture, will fall for this guy. They will fall for him. And I hope he is watching or someone close to him is watching. I, 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 I pray for you. 
I pray for you, my guy. I pray that God helps you. You are deep into these things. You are deep into this occultic world. You are deep into this thing. You need to be to, 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 to rededicate your life to Christ and leave this nonsense of deceiving people. Preach the true word of God. What is wrong with preaching the word? What is wrong with standing up for Christ? People are standing up for you and you are encouraging people to stand up for you to support the, the wrong that you are doing. To support the, 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 the errors. People are supporting you. People, they are going out cursing people in your name, Bushir. They are doing that. And to me, it shows the type of person that you are and the people that you are bathing out from your ministry and the people that you are bathing out from your ministry. These are not Christians. These are not followers of Christ, but they are your followers. Hence, they don't stand with the truth which is found in the Word of God. They stand with you. They stand with you. I don't stand for anyone. I stand for Christ. And I stand for the truth of the word of God. And the word of God is clear about false prophets. And you are one of them. And you are one of them. You guys, stop this nonsense. Because your time will be up soon. Will be up soon. God is giving you this he did this. He, he is so patient with you. God is so patient with you, my guy. He is so patient with you. And it's not going to be a long time that God's patience will run out for you. It will run out for you. So I'm warning you now to stop this nonsense of trying to deceive people, trying to make yourself seem like this great man of God, which you are not. And <laughs> guys, to show this guy is not a Christian. He is not a follower of Christ. He's not born again. Why is it always about him? It's always about him. Him, 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 all the time. When you start the Bible carefully, it's not about me. It's not about any pastor. It's not about any leader in Christ but it's about Christ himself. It's about the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross, dying for people, so that people can be delivered from their sins. It's not about me. It's about what the Bible says. It's about what scripture says. And anything that is being said or done must be tested against scripture. Open your eyes, people. Open your eyes. Don't let these guys deceive you. Don't let them do that. Okay. I'm going to read another verse. I'm going to read another verse. Um, I'm going to read another verse. Okay. Uh, let me just see something here. Okay. I'm going to read another verse. And the verse that I'm going to read um, will be the book of Second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So let me go there quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to prove to you, biblically, how to identify this false prophets. Chapter 11. Yeah? Let's read chapter 11. I wrote my notes there. Right. Chapter 11, verse 3 to 4. Aha. Uh -huh. oh, sorry. Oh, first one. Second. Second. Second Corinthians 11. Uh, right. Uh, 3 to 4. Ne? First 3 to 4. Second Corinthians 3 to 4. Um, but I fear that somehow. 
your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted, just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you received, or a different kind of gospel than the one you believe. You believed. Let me read this again. But I fear that someone, your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted. Just as Eve was deceived by, 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 by the cunning ways of the serpent. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you received, or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. Guys, guys. This is the scripture, this is the Bible. And it's true. Our attention has been divided. People nowadays, they are out here protecting men, mere men, who claim to be prophets, but are false prophets. And they have lost the focus. They have divided their attention. They are focusing more on what man says than what Christ says in his word. Your attention is divided, man. Uh, uh, my guy. Your attention is divided. People believe more in what people say than what Christ says, than what God says in his word. We must give Christ his undivided attention. We must purely pay attention to what the word of God is saying, not to what man says. Right, let's continue in the same in the same book, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, I will read from verse 13 to 15. Verse 13 to 15. Yeah? Verse 13 to 15. Okay. Verse 13. The Bible says, these people are false apostles. Yeah? These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I am not, su but I am not surprised. Do not be surprised by these false prophets, by these false apostles, false pastors. The Bible says, Paul is saying, that, do not be surprised by them. Look at this. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. It's not me saying that, it's the Bible. Even Satan disguises himself as the angel of light. That's what Satan does. Right. So, so it is no wonder, so it is no wonder that his servants, his servants, the devil's servants, also disguise themselves, they disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. <laughs> as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. That's what the Bible says. Second Corinthians chapter 11, you can read the whole chapter. Or where I'm reading now is Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I am not surprised if Satan disguised himself or disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder, or it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. Even Satan himself disguises himself as the angel of light. These people, the likes of Bushiri, they are impostors. They are impostors. 
They are imposters. Yeah, I said it. He is an imposter. This guy. He is not a Christian whatsoever. He is an imposter, and he has mastered the game of imposterism. He has mastered. It. But fortunately enough, he he can't deceive everyone. He will only be able. He's only able to deceive those who believe in his lies. But he can't deceive people like me. He can't deceive people who are able to analyze scripture. He can't deceive the chosen ones, which is us, believers in Christ, true believers in Christ. He can't deceive us. He can. He will only deceive those who are after miracles, who are after prosperity, who are after uh, instant success who are after instant money, all these fake things that these guys preach about, things that are not biblical, things that do not glorify Christ, fake prophecies about uh, fake miracles, about telling <laughs> if you are fat, how to get, how, how, uh, how you can be, uh, if you are fat, how you can get, gain weight loss, or get weight loss to a, a particular miracle. Fake things. How is that glorifying the name of God? <laughs> weight loss miracle. Miracle money. Where is it in the Bible? It's nowhere. It's nowhere. And these guys, they are misinterpreting scripture. If you are someone who is knowledgeable about scripture, you would know that these guys, they are out of context. There are certain scriptures they preach that will suit them, that will suit them. And people who, are, who, who do not spend time with the Bible and with the Word of God, they fall for this. They fall for this. Hmm. Right. So now there was this recent earthquake in Cape Town, or let me say nearer to Cape Town, or next to Cape Town. Now, I just want to read something. Before I go there, I just want to read the notes that I wrote here. Oh, let me read them after. Let me read them after. Okay, I'm gonna watch now his video. I'm gonna react to the video. Okay, I'm gonna react to the video where he is, uh, which they posted in his channel. Okay. So on the 5th of October, this guy prophesied that an earthquake would strike Cape Town. Okay, 11 months after the prophecy, mm -hmm, the word of the Lord through his servant. <laughs> okay, okay, strike Cape Town in the early hours. Okay, okay, no problem. Let's see. Prophecy is a divinely inspired prediction by a prophet on the instructions of the <laughs> Look look at how they are trying to to write the word prophet in capital letters. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Spirit. In prophecy, God speaks to his people. One of the functions of a prophet is to warn of an impending danger or calamity in a city or nation. On the 5th of October 2019, during a meeting with the leaders of the church, Prophet Sheba Bashiri warned of an earthquake that would strike the southern African city of Cape Town. Mm. A day of tempest is coming in this nation. A day of destruction, says the law. A day of it destruction. Is coming. Oh, the whole a day of destruction. A day is coming where the whole land and the whole country. Land and the whole country will seek to look for the Lord. Okay. For something is going to happen that your eyes have never seen. Yeah. Your the eyes have never seen, ears have never heard. What? Eyes never seen. So this thing that is coming, the eyes have never seen, the ears have never heard. So. That means <laughs> this earthquake, people have never seen it before. They've never heard about it before. Okay. 
What? Your ears have never heard about. Okay. For it shall start from earthquakes in Cape Town. Okay, it shall start with earthquakes in Cape Town. Okay, so there was a tremor in, in Cape Town. Okay. Okay. So Ure the Papa was actually about this. In a very vague way. In a very vague way. And I see it clearly a day of darkness and gloom coming. Huh? He gave a vivid description of how the earth a tremors day of darkness and gloom. What's the day today? What's the day today? What's the day? Today? What's the day? Guys, don't be deceived by this. Look at this. 5th of October, 2019. There shall be an earthquake in this land of South Africa. Oh. That's a shake like an earth tremor. Okay, that will shake like an earth tremor. Mm -hmm. If you go back, he said it will be a great destruction. But now it will shake like an earth tremor. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I saw it shaking. Mm. I'm saying this to you for your own prayer to pray. For I'm saying it. Mm. I'm sick in the night. Okay. I'm sick in the night. Mm -hmm. The earth shaking and reports everywhere South Africa, earthquake, earthquake, earthquake. South Africa, earthquake. A further proof that it was not man speaking, but God. He saw in the a further proof that it was not man speaking, but God. A further proof that it was not man speaking, but, but God. Guys, be very careful. If you, if you read the Bible, uh, if you read the Bible, anything that God spoke to his prophets was not as vague as this one. It was not as vague as this one. This one is so vague. Uh, it's how can I put it? It's so vague. It's like these other prophets, the likes of Makandiwa, who who said that they prophesied about coronavirus. But when you listen carefully to what they were saying, it was so vague. It didn't hold any biblical substance in it. There wasn't any biblical. Even in this one, there's no biblical substance in it. You know, it was not God. I mean, it was sorry. It was God speaking, speaking really. God speaks to his word. It's in the Bible, to his word. Okay, let's continue watching this. Wow. The spiritual realm, that the story of the earthquake will gain headlines to the rest of the world. Rest of the world. For it shall stop from earthquakes in Cape Town. And I see it clearly, a day of darkness and gloom coming. A day of darkness and gloom is coming. A day of darkness and gloom is coming. So that means when this earthquake comes, a day of doom and gladden, a day of gloom or of darkness and gloom is coming. Yeah? Meaning that there will be, it will be so severe to a point that there will be people dying. That is gloom and darkness. Yeah? Dying, it will be so severe, properties will be damaged. A lot would happen. Okay. For the sake of time, let me watch this. Sick in the night. Mm. If shaking. Ah, okay. Okay. Reports everywhere. South Africa. Eleven clear months after the prophecy, disaster struck Cape Town. Disaster. An earthquake. Disaster strike. Look at the, the, the way they use words, these guys. Look at the wording. Disaster strike, Cape Town. Was it really disaster? Why are they using those words? To, 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 clearly, to make you believe <laughs> what he is saying here so that you can believe that this guy is a true prophet, is a true man of God. And he is not, this is so vague, guys. I'm sorry, but there are people, even Sangomas, they can predict something. Sangomas, and, uh, and uh, in fact, let me show you in the Bible. You know, I always prove something in the Bible. Let's read the book of Isaiah. Let me, let's read the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 18. Chapter 
chapter 8, Isaiah chapter 8. Yeah. I'm going to start with the book of Isaiah chapter 8 in the Old Testament. Uh, Isaiah chapter 8 in the Old Testament. Uh, the verse will be 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Book of Isaiah 19 and 20. Someone may say to you, let's ask the mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead with their whisperings and mutterings, they will tell us what to do. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Should, should the living seek guidance from the dead? Look to God's instructions and teachings. Look to God's instructions and teachings, that's verse 20. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. People who contradict the word of God, they are completely in the dark. This guy is in the dark. His followers, they are in the dark. And we need to pray for them. I don't hate Bushiri, by the way. I love the guy as a human being. And I pray that he gets saved. But I hate his deceits. I hate the fact that he's deceiving people. I hate his actions. It's scriptural. The Bible said we must expose these type of things. Look at this. No? Um, Sangomas, mediums, Sorcerers, they can predict future events. This guy is a sorcerer. You know? And even his prediction, if it was coming from God, I'm telling you, he would have been very accurate about it. And you can see, you can see he's using words like uh, uh, darkness and gloom, meaning that the earthquake was going to be severe. Was it severe? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Right, my time is about to run out, but I will continue with this on another video. I will continue with this on another video. Before, before, before I, I, I stop here, let me read another one, the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, that will be chapter 13. Chapter 13. Chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. Verse 1 to 5. Verse 1 to 5. Verse 1 to 5. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. Okay, let's hear what the Bible is saying here. Verse 1 to 5. 13, 13, 13. Not, um, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. Ah, oh, right. The Bible says, suppose there are prophets among you or those who dream dreams about the future and they promise you signs or miracles and the predicted signs or miracles occur. If they then say, come, let us worship other gods like, like, like this guy. People are worshiping the God of major one. Who's the God of major one? It's not God. It's not God. No? Nah? People in the comment sections of this guy, they are busy saying, praise be to the God of nature one. Who is the God of nature one? It's not the God of the Bible. It's not the God of the Bible. These guys are misguided in terms of, of scripture. Look at this. Suppose there are prophets among you or those who dream dreams about the future and they promise you signs or miracles. Uh -huh. And the predicted signs or miracles occur. Okay. If they then say, come, let us worship other gods, gods you have not known before, do not listen to them. The Lord your God is testing, you, is testing you to see if you truly love him with all your heart and soul. Serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. Serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. I'll be continuing with this in the next video. Boom. I'm back, guys. I'm back. Let me continue from where I left off. Let me continue from where I left off. I was reading the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verse 1 to um, 5. The Bible says, suppose there are prophets among you or those who dream dreams about the future. 
and they promise you signs or miracles and the predicted signs or miracles occur if they then say come let us worship other gods gods you have not known before do not listen to them the lord your god is testing you to see if you truly love him with all your heart and soul now that's verse four ah, sorry yeah uh verse three verse four serve only the lord your god and fear him alone fear him alone obey his commands listen to his voice and cling to him the false prophets or visionaries who try to lead you astray must be put to death for they encourage rebellion against the lord your god who redeemed you from slavery and brought you out of the land of egypt since they try to lead you astray from the way the lord your god commanded you to live you must put them to death in this way you will purge the evil from among you Aha, uh-huh. that's what it's not me, it's the Bible. It's the Bible. And and guys, this is how you can recognize a false minister, even when some of his predictions turn out to be true. Well, his prediction turn out to be somewhat true. But look at the wedding. Was was what then you can see the vagueness of his prediction or so-called prophecy that is not from God. Because anything that is from God, anything that is from God is not vague. It's not vague. If, if God truly spoke to this guy, <laughs> it would have been dark and gloomy. As he said, that means this earthquake would have been severe, as he predicted. And by the way, the Bible did speak to us about earthquakes and all that stuff, that they will happen uh, in various places and all that stuff. The Bible did say that. But now, before I go into another scripture, before I go into another scripture, I just want to read something for you. Um... This earthquake yeah, uh, appeared uh, in the south coast of South Africa. Yeah, and the magnitude was 6.2. That was the magnitude. That means the size according to the Richter, uh, Richter scale or something like that. I did geography, by the way. Um, now they say that this, that magnitude is very big. Yeah, is very big. According to the Richter scale, the, magni- the magnitude of 6.2 is very big. But where did this earthquake occur? In the south coast of South Africa. The south coast of South Africa is 1,600 kilometers along the African plate module. It's far from Cape Town. <laughs> It's far from Cape Town, yeah? but the people in Cape Town, they felt the tremors, yeah? the tremors. Um, and and, and, and they, they, they experienced a smaller event, which was 2.5. Yeah? So that means the earth wasn't shaking. That much. It was just a small tremor. Now the difference between an earthquake and a tremor, they say here the difference lies in the magnitude of the event. In South, in South Africa, a seismic event with a magnitude lower than 4.0 is considered a tremor. It's just a small shaking of the earth. It's not, it's not that big. It's just a small shaking. This was just a small shaking. If it was big, then it would have caused havoc. It would, people would have died. And by the way, before you people dispute what I'm saying here, I, I, I did my own research about this. You can also Google this information. There was, in 1969, there was an earthquake that took place in a town or in a place called Tulbak, 
in the Western Cape. Yeah? That was in 1969. According to some of the um, articles that I read, 12 people died. The magnitude, the magnitude, the magnitude was 6.3. And there were a series, and there were a series of aftershocks. The largest occurred six months later. And it had a magnitude of 5.7, according to the Richard scale. Yeah? So this is not the first time that such an event occurred in the Western Cape. So why is this one a, a, a bigger deal? Can't you see this guy wants people to glorify him? Why is he boasting about it? Why is he gloating about it? Why are his people so joyous about it? Because they want more people to believe in this guy. And he is making his believers, uh, sorry, his followers, yeah, his believers, I was right, to believe more in him, not in Christ. This, this guy is trying to point people unto himself. Remember the scriptures that I read. Don't just watch this video and take some small parts and, 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 and try to argue. Uh, with some of the small, uh, some of the things that I said, watch the entire video from from the start until the uh, until the end. Read scripture, analyze scripture. This guy, his main aim is to point people unto himself. Yeah, but he's preaching about Jesus. Of course, the devil does that. The Bible says even demons believe. In the book of James, the Bible says even demons believe in God and they tremble. People who are not born again, they also believe in Jesus, but they are not born again. People who are not born again, they even, uh, they even preach using the Bible. They preach the gospel according to them, using the Bible, but they don't even believe in it. They don't even believe in it. All right. Now, according to a doctor, Dr. Koza, who is an executive manager of Applied Geosciences at the Council for Geosciences, yeah, he said this, uh, while the tremors were a shock to many, Dr. Kosa says that the Western Cape is not unfamiliar with seismic events. The Western Cape is not what unfamiliar, meaning that they did occur in the past. So it's not like, as he says, something. Remember, this guy said, this is something that people have never seen, no head. They have never seen, no head. <laughs> and you guys are falling for that. Dr. Koza says that the Western Cape is not unfamiliar with seismic events. He says that there have been a number of big events in the past that caused damage. As to those who feel the tremors and those who don't, it all depends on geology. I quote, that is, end of quote, that is Dr. Koza, who is an executive manager of Applied Geosciences at the Council for, Geos for Geosciences. You can find his, his whole statement at ewn.co.za about this past event that happened in Cape Town. Were there damages to property in Cape Town? No. Were the people that died? No. And, 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 and guys, before you say, but people pray, look at this. This occurred in the past. This did happen in the past. So why? <laughs> and he make it seem like it's the first time ever. No eyes have seen. No ear have heard. So it's the first time ever. I can see through the deceit of people. I can see through his deceit. He is trying to, he is trying to make it seem like 
God spoke to him about this. God did not. This guy is a sorcerer. He's a wizard, this guy. And by the way, uh, Bushir has some people that he has hired. He has people that he has hired. This guy, he works with a lot of people. In, he, has, he has a team of people that give him information. I've been to his church, and anyone who has been to his church and the people that are close to him, they will testify of this. The guy has a team of people, researchers, uh, people who, 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 who can research about such things. Remember, when an event occurs in a place, there is a high probability that it will occur again. That's just scientific. When an event occurs in a place, there is a high probability that it will occur, that it will occur again. You know, so this guy has a group of researchers in his team, people that give him and feed him information. He's surrounded by tele, uh, by, by all types of television screens. He watches the news, this guy, because he wants to stay relevant. He wants to stay afloat so that so that when something appears or something is about to happen, he prophesies, then he says, boom. You see, my prophecy came to pass. This is how these guys, all, all of them, the likes of T.P. Joshua, him, Alf Lukaus, all these guys, this is how they deceive people. This is how they try to make it seem that what they are doing is from God, while it's not. It's not from God. It's not from God. I, I, I've proven to you, biblically, read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verse 1, up until verse 5. I've proven to you. Now, in the end time, I want to read this. In the, uh, in the end time, many religious leaders and non-religious people would be saying that we are in the end time. That can have two bad consequences. The first one, since that part of their warning is true, it influences people to believe the rest of their message is true. Since his, what he's saying here is true. Now, many people, they believe that I, all his messages are true. Second, with all the counterfeit messages around it, around, sorry. Second, with all the counterfeit messages around, it makes it much harder for people to find the truth and discern God's true messages so many counterfeit messages that are around so it makes it hard for people to pinpoint whether someone is true or not it makes it harder but it makes it harder for those who are not true to the word of god it makes it harder for those who are not true to scripture okay right let me let me let me <laughs> Let me continue watching this video. Measuring 6.2 magnitude on the Richter scale mm. hit the southern tip exactly as the prophet has seen in the spirit, almost. Exactly as the prophet has seen in the spirit. Exactly. Exactly. Did, did the prophet, did the prophet um, also talk about the magnitude? From what I'm watching, he didn't speak about the magnitude of the of the earthquake. He just said that there will be an earthquake in, in Cape Town. He wasn't specific. So what do you mean exactly as the prophet has seen in the spirit? Has seen in the spirit. Guys, don't let these guys deceive you. Don't let them deceive you. Read the Bible, guys. We have so many false prophets in, in, in the world today. People who claim to have powers from God and all that stuff. People who are in this for money. To push it, this is business. Why, 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 why do you think he is, his people and him, they are, they are, they are, they are publishing this? 
particular thing. Because it's on the news. So they want to, so they, they, they are taking advantage of the fact that this is on the news and that he predicted that in Cape Town there might be an earthquake. And by the way, the earthquake did not really hit Cape Town. As I read from you, it just hit parts of, it, actually it did not really, it was just a tremor. The, 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 the 6.2, it hit the south coast, a place that is 1,600 kilometers away from Read, read is from the internet. From, because if, if that earthquake, if that scale or, or that size, that magnitude did hit Cape Town exactly, we would be saying something else now. You'd be saying, saying did the prophet really get this from God? The answer is no. The answer is no as seen on scripture. Fake prophets usually seem spiritual outwardly, but their messages are counterfeits. They seem spiritual outwardly, but their messages are counterfeits. Mixture of truth and error. This guy is able to mix the truth with an error so that you don't see the error in his truth. <laughs> Guys, right, okay, let me continue just to react. It's the year before. For it shall start from earthquakes in Cape Town. Mm. Earthquakes in Cape Town. Mm. Look how they are repeating it. Look, 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 at, look at how they are repeating it. And he says, I see it clearly. I see it clearly. Now, if you saw it clearly, my guy, if you saw this clearly, clearly, you know, if I say something clearly, then that means in terms of how I convey the message, I must be specific because I saw it clearly. If I know something clearly, I must be, I must be able to convey what I saw. I saw this clearly. So that means I must be able to convey it clearly so that I must not speak in parables. And this is what false prophets do. They always speak in parables. They always speak in, 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 in vague ways. No, they, 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 they don't really pinpoint uh, something because they are not seeing from God. These are sorcerers. They are just predicting. They are doing what Sangomas are doing. No? Because they are also attending. They go to Juju people, these people. Yeah. Look at it. He says, and I see it clearly, a day of darkness. And then they put gloom. They put gloom. Let me just, I just want to see something. The way they put gloom there, my God. The way they put gloom. Gloom, meaning, my God, look at this. Partial or total darkness, a state of depression or despondency. He, guys, was the country in a state of, dis of depression and despondency? Was the country in total darkness? When this thing happened in Cape Town, he saw it clearly. <laughs> Guys, stop allowing fake prophets to lie to you. And, and, and some people, they're like, happy, yeah, yeah. This guy is not a Christian. In fact, this guy is a fake prophet. He's a fake prophet. He needs to repent from his lies. You must repent, my guy. Accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and stop misleading people to hell because you and the people that are following you, you people are going to hell. I'm sorry to say this, but it's in the Bible. You people are going to hell if you don't repent, if you don't repent. Okay, right. Uh, so as you can see here, 
That is the meaning of gloom. Okay, let, let me continue. Mm -hmm. Day of darkness and gloom coming. Hey. Prophecy and confirmation. With news just in, a 6.2 magnitude earthquake has hit Cape Town. Residents have been warned to exercise extra. So they are now playing the news that came out that day. Uh, but look at this. Hit off the coast of Cape Town this evening. The coast, the coast, not Cape Town, the coast of Cape Town. Cape Town, that is that, is that magnitude. It hits off the coast of Cape Town, not Cape Town. If that hit Cape Town, would have been saying something else. Caution, there are no immediate reports of casualties or damage. We'll bring you more on this developing story. Well, the Council for Geoscience has confirmed uh, that uh, an earthquake uh, did occur last night. Tremors were felt following 6.2. So tremors were felt, small shakings were felt in Cape Town. Right. <laughs> um, now, Guys, I've got I've got nothing else to say about this. If 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 the Bible doesn't convince you that these guys are false prophets, then nothing else I say will ever convince you. These guys are false prophets. They are pretending to be men of God. They are not. These guys are in it for money. Always it's about them. Always it's about them. People must say. People, let me read this book again. Deuteronomy 13, verse 1 to verse 5. Suppose there are prophets among you or those who dream dreams about the future and they promise you signs or miracles and the, and the, predicted, and the predicted signs or miracles occur. If they, then, if they then say, come, let us worship other gods, gods you have not known before, do not listen to them. The Lord your God is testing you to see if you truly love him with all your heart and soul. People are worshipping the God of Major One. Who is the God of Major One? It's not biblical, that thing. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. Even if he says, hey, in the past, uh, it was uh, people were saying, God of Abraham, God of, of Jacob, God of Isaac, uh, Isaac. Now it's time for God of Major One and the God... Hey, is that, hey, that is not scriptural. There was a reason why in that time it was like that. And it was, and that, and that one of saying God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of, uh, of Jacob was said is because it's scriptural and the context behind it is not what you people are portraying, making people to call you papas. Hey, daddy, hey, papa, papa this, papa that, making people to bow down to you. We are not supposed to bow down to, to any man. We are supposed to bow down only to Christ and Christ alone. Look at this. The Bible says, God is testing us as believers to see if we truly love him with all our hearts and soul. We are supposed to love God and God only. And when we love God, we love people but not worship them. Not worship people. I love Bushiri. I don't hate him. I hate his actions. I don't worship him. I will never worship any man. I will worship God only and God alone. He makes you people to fear him. Look at this, look at this. The Lord your God is testing you to see if you truly love him with all your heart and soul. Serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. These guys, they come, they, they come into their shows, they preach uh, that you should fear a man of God, you know, you should not speak bad about a man of God, you should not rebuke a man of God, uh, you should not speak bad about a man of God. I'm not speaking bad about any man of God. I am, I am actually revealing the lie this so-called man of God is portrayed. Guys, let us stop falling for nonsense. This is nonsense. 
listen to my to this entire video before you say anything and listen to it again before you say something look at this i don't you, you guys fear these guys i don't fear them i don't look at this uh, serve only the lord your god and fear him alone obey his commands listen to his voice and cling to him to who to christ we cling we must only cling to christ we must not cling on any man. We must not cling on anything someone says but to the word of God. The word of God must be our final authority. The word of God must be our foundation. The word of God must be what we, 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 we use to test everything that is being said to us. Don't believe anything if it's not from the Bible. It's not from God. And even if someone tries to quote some verses saying that is from God, if, 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 if your spirit is not with it, it's not from God. It's not from God. The Bible does not contradict itself, by the way. It's people who contradict themselves because they don't know scripture, because they are not spending time with the word. You are a believer, but you're not spending time with the word. Hence, you will believe these lies that people like Bushiri are portraying into the world. He is now, they are now gloating about it. Hey, 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 prophecy came true. Hey, 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 my prophecy was confirmed. Mm. Okay. Uh, serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. Don't fear anyone. Don't fear man. I don't fear man. I don't fear Bushiri. I don't fear, fear Lukau. I don't fear any man for that matter i fear god only i fear god only why you guys are fearing men you are fearing people that you don't even know a mere man ah, don't speak bad about Bushir. Who, who, if you speak bad about him this will happen what <laughs> okay um uh, right so that's what scripture says that's what scripture says, and I just want to read something quickly that I wrote down. If a false minister is not correctly teaching all of God's word, there is no light in him. If he is not teaching obedience to God's word, he was not sent by God. Jesus was quoting Deuteronomy 8 uh, verse 3. When he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That is in Luke chapter 4, verse 4. Likewise, true ministers of God will be striving to teach every word of God. True ministers of God will be striving to teach the word of God. Not this nonsense of prophecies and fake miracles that people are coming up with nowadays to, to, to lure many people or to attract many people to themselves so that they make more money. This guy, the money that he has, he started it, uh, he, he got it from his ministry. The businesses that now he boasts about. He used the ministry money to finance his businesses. Don't be, don't be fooled by these people. And even if they have money, this is money of people coming from people. Just because I have money doesn't make me a true man of God. And even if I don't have it, whether you have money or not, it doesn't make you a true man of God. A true man of God is someone that leads and points people to Christ, not to himself. People are bowing down to this guy. People are believing the lies of this guy. Thank you for watching. That's it. Thank you.